Hello everyone, and welcome to another episode of Chewing the Rue. Today I will be drinking and talking about the Industrial Rye IPA by Diamond Knot, Diamond Knot Brewing Company. Um, I'm not sure exactly, well I guess industrial, well, <laughs> I was about to say, I'm not sure exactly what industrial means, it's a, it's a, a, a lineup in their beers, but it says right here, the industrial series showcases our imperial lineup of beers. So this is an imperial IPA, so that means higher ABV, and sure enough it is 8.5%. And this is a rye IPA, which does not mean that it is only rye in the grain bill, but that it is at least 55 per, 50%, I think it is. Um, it's, it's significantly rye. Uh, there will always be, like just about every beer, unless it's designed or um, specially created to have only a single grain in its creation, will have multiple grains in the grain bill. Each grain brings with it uh, a different uh, mouthfeel, a different thickness, um, different sugar contents, different amounts of effort required to uh, release the to, to, um, release the, the starches that the uh, yeast will work on to make the or to release your sugars that the yeast will work on to turn into alcohol. Um, and so very often a, a grain bill is determined based on the desired outcome. And if you're developing a new beer, you're going to be taking the time to experiment with different grain bills in order to achieve a desired outcome. Another point about rye is that it is not the flavor you think of when you think of a rye bread. Rye bread, yes, has a very distinctive flavor. But that distinctive flavor is not necessarily or not completely from the rye. It is mostly from the caraway seeds that are used to flavor the rye, um, the, the rye bread. So you're not looking for necessarily a spiciness when you're looking at a rye made beer. It's not going to taste like rye bread because there's not caraway seeds in it. So, so you, I mean, there's nothing saying that you can't put caraway seeds in in your beer, but that's not the flavor of the rye. That's the flavor of the caraway. Um, so all that long preamble out of the way, <laughs> let's open this up and uh, see how it tastes. I'm experimenting with different ways of opening these things because when I'm recording audio, Opening the can always makes a really, really loud, or it's, it's, it doesn't seem loud to us because it's such a sharp sound, it's so short, um, but it produces this just ping in my audio that um, really messes with the uh, audio levels when I go to normalize. And I'm entirely an amateur at that, so I don't know the right ways to clear that out quickly, um, but I'm just trying to see if I can record less of the click from opening the cans. Let's see here. Okay, so this is a pretty nice um, honey, uh, approaching amber maybe, but it, it's really towards the honey side. Uh, the head was pretty quickly gone, but it's quick to come back too. Um, the head is 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 also taking its color cues from the beer itself. It's not white. It is a uh, cream colored. Hmm, really smelling the malts here. It's quite nice. Creaminess, definitely. Perhaps some apple. Hmm, there's some molasses in there. Now that's, in order to produce, goodness gracious, in order to produce the the industrial level, level of beer, the higher ABV, there is necessarily more sugar in the, in the, the, is it the wort? Or is wort only for whiskey? I can't recall. In the liquid before the yeast is added, there is more sugars. Um, so it's not uncommon in an industrial or a, um, 
a an, an uh, imperial. That's the word. It's not uncommon in an imperial beer to find more pronounced sweetness. And with the with this being uh, not really pale malts, these are definitely a little bit on the darker side. Um, as in they were roasted more, those sugars would be more toasted. And so you would expect to, to smell things like molasses, which is burnt sugar pretty much. Or it's, it's not really, it's, it's a part of the offshoot of the process of the sugar, but it has that darker, richer, more, you know, if you're getting into black strap, more of a burned bitterness flavor to it. Yeah, so some some like like maybe stewed apples, uh, the maltiness. You're definitely smelling uh, a rich bready flavor, bready character, and the um, and that molasses. But it's not all dark things. And with the stewed apples, there's also maybe some, some green or fresh apples in there. There's something kind of bright, almost floral, grassy. But it's more of a feeling than a distinct element. Well, let's taste it and see how it goes. Mm. Brown sugar. Definitely, which complements the molasses that I picked up in the nose. Um, brown sugar. Uh, this is a very sweet IPA. It's quite nice. It's very balanced. Um, so, so brown sugar, uh, maybe a hint of it. It kind of fades to a molasses, and that almost becomes a black strap. Maybe <laughs> as the hops kick in. Um, you know, because from from brown sugar to Grandma's molasses to blackstrap molasses to hops, <laughs> as the as the flavor goes. Uh, more of those stewed apples, definitely a, a very nice breadiness. Hmm, I want to say maybe celery. It's, it's really, in a beer that advertises the primary element of its malt, I would expect the malt to be forefront. And I'm detect and that is the dominant element of the flavor of this beer, is this rich, unctuous, um, deep, tasty maltiness uh, that just kind of runs through, ties everything together. The sweetness is an aspect of the maltiness. Uh, the the hops are there, the IPA hops are there in service of that maltiness just to, to break up the monotony so it's not just a one note wonder. It's really, really tasty. Um, <laughs> so there's IPAs I do like. This is an IPA I do like. Um, yeah, that's that's really good. With the heaviness, with it being an imperial, this is definitely a cooler weather beer. But it's it's really, it's a good uh, like pick you up after a hard day after you you burned all like, a lot of calories or something like that because it's it's it feels thick and rich. And, well, it doesn't feel it is thick and rich and tasty without you know without being so far into the thick and richness as like a a Trappist, uh, a Belgian Abbey Ale kind of thing. You're not looking at a you know syrup in a bottle kind of thing. This is just a very, very nice, strong, confident, um, malt forward, tasty Imperial IPA. They'd probably work pretty well with uh, just about any meat and potatoes dish. Um, 
I think it might actually work with a, a richer fish like salmon. Or you might even go and get adventurous and try it with maybe something uh, like a, a more a stronger seafood dish like a, a clams or, or um, crab. Not lobster. I think it would knock the lobster out. Um, but something, some dish where you have some real strong, unctuous flavors um, and that can stand up to a complementary pairing from another strong, confident flavor. I think that would work pretty well, actually. Um, I wouldn't pair it with a dessert. There's just too much, too much hop in there. Um, well, I suppose it might, it might be interesting to try it with a... Um, in the in the spirit of I'll try anything once, um, it'd be interesting to see how it, I think how it pairs with that with an ice cream. I'm not sure, but I think it'd be interesting. Um, anyways, this is a very pleasant, very good, as in I enjoy this a lot. Um, the Industrial Rye IPA by Diamond Not Diamond Not Brewing Company, another one of the Pacific Northwest breweries. Um, I have enjoyed just about every diamond knot I've been, I've drunk. They have some very they have a very nice classic hefeweizen that's usually pretty easy to find at restaurants in the area on tap. Um, and the industrial series has covered several beers. I couldn't tell you each of the ones I've tried, but I've had several of them and I've enjoyed every one that I've tried. And um, yeah, so that's been this. I guess I will catch y'all on the flip side.